Hello, I'm Ed Amoroso from Tag Cyber, and I'm here with a good friend of mine, Paolo Shakarian, who is the CEO and co-founder of a company called Cyrocon. Um, Paolo, how are you doing? Well, welcome. Doing great, Ed. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it's nice to connect up. I always enjoy when we uh, when we talk, and I'm I'm looking forward to uh, learning something new today. But hey, for the folks who may be less familiar with your company, why don't you take a minute and just share what you guys do, and then we can dig into some fun topics. Yeah, at Cyrocon, uh, we're focused on leveraging artificial intelligence and big data to make cybersecurity more proactive. And the main product that we have in market that does this today is called Cyrocon Priority. And what that allows our customers to do is be able to predict which software vulnerabilities hackers will use in an attack. And this determination is made through a combination of machine learning that's powered by threat intelligence gathered from various sources, including social media, dark web, deep web, and open sources as well. That's cool. Now, I, I know you've been at this for, um, for some time now. This is an area that you've been working in for a while. Tell the folks a little bit about yourself. You've got an interesting background, both weaving the startup community and also the academic community. You, you, you've got a very unique background. Why don't you share? Yeah. No, thank you for that. Um, I started my career actually as a uh, military officer in the Army. And after spending some time doing intelligence analysis in the field, I had a special uh, fellowship at the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. And there they were using big data and artificial intelligence to predict the activities of various kinds of threat actors, terrorists, insurgents, and so on. And so for me, that kind of started a whole new path in my career because I felt that if we could scale the intelligence analysis, we can do a lot better job of catching bad guys. Fast forwarding a few years after, you know, in working in this field for a while, uh, my wife and I, she, uh, Yana, she co-founded the company. Uh, we together created a research group at Arizona State University. And we brought in money from uh, the Director of National Intelligence and the Navy. Uh, and the goal was to apply these ideas we've been working on uh, using AI and big data to predict, but applying it to cyber threat actors. And so after doing this for a few years, we felt that it was commercially viable. And so we decided to create a company to bring the technology to market because we're really passionate about helping enterprises move to a more proactive stance in their cybersecurity. You know, Pell, I want to ask you, there's a, a lot of companies that innovate with assistance from the federal government and the Defense Department in particular. And, and I'm curious, what was your, what's been your experience kind of taking technology that you were working in maybe more military defense context and translating it to enterprise. Do you find that things have to be changed much or do you see a, a sort of a direct correlation between the threats like at a bank versus the kinds of things you'd see working with DARPA or with the military? What's been your experience there? So I think the core tech, you know, what we've developed, we have a data collection capability where we're automatically crawling information from various data sources and that information is highly parsed and normalized and used in uh, our machine learning algorithms, which actually make the prediction. That's where a lot of our core IP lies. Now, that those algorithms were every bit as applicable to the commercial world as to uh, the defense and uh, intelligence communities. The things that we really had to adjust on were workflow. Uh, these kind of things uh, were actually a lot of fun for us to learn because, you know, we have a lot of very, um, you know, just great customers, uh, you know, who have really top-notch security teams and, you know, they know a lot and they're really good at their job. And we took a lot of understanding for how they do business and integrated that back into our product. Well, when you first started and you were looking at sort of machine learning and AI, did you find that at the time people were a little bit less enthusiastic about that now? It seems like everybody's applying some sort of machine learning to cyber. It seems like you were doing that a little bit before um, others. What's been your experience? Do you, does it surprise you that you see so much enthusiasm there? Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's funny because, I mean, I've 
I've been at it for quite some time, as is my wife in the field. And, uh, you know, so a lot of things that are sort of old hat to us when we started talking to people about it, like in 2015, there were a lot of skepticism. There's like, you know, you're trying to replace humans altogether. It's like, no, it's not quite what we're trying to do. Um, and, you know, or no, your stuff will never be as accurate as, you know, an analyst. Um, but what happened, I think, in the intervening years is there were sort of two things is one is AI and machine learning have, you know, provided so much value in so many different domains. Um, you know, it's making people ask the question, how can this benefit my workflow, my job, make me more efficient? And at the same time in cybersecurity, in that same time span, we have seen an explosion uh, in the amount of uh, vulnerabilities present in the attack surface. Uh, in the past week, there have been about 900 uh, vulnerability disclosures. Uh, I don't know if that's going to maintain uh, that rate this year, but when you look at the last, you know, three years, you know, you were doing between 12 to 15,000 disclosures a year. Prior to 2017, it was more like five to 6,000 a year. Um, and so this explosion in the size of the attack surface has really forced people to think, you know, I can't approach this problem with manual analytics any longer. We need to bring technology to bear on it. And this is the perfect spot for machine learning. Interesting. You know, it's funny. I've known you a while. I had the opportunity to interview you maybe a good year and a half, two years ago. I, I remember li life seems so different then. I'm curious. I know I, you and I would meet together and do things kind of in person. What's been your experience as a CEO of a company? You know, we're filming this in August of 2020. So we're still in the middle of um, a lot of the pandemic uh, consequence. Curious, as, as a CEO, what's been your experience sort of running more virtual and dealing with customers more virtually. Has that been a tough thing to manage? I think it's um, it's been a transition of sorts uh, on the engineering side. So uh, my co-founder, she's the CTO. She's actually seen increase in productivity yeah. because we're affording them more flexibility in you know how they do their work and they're more they feel less forced to come to the office. We didn't have a lot of requirements for them to come to the office in the first place, but I think that freedom was, was a productivity gain. Um, on the sales side, uh, we've seen that the move toward making sales virtually through software like this and Zoom mm. um, is getting more and more acceptance. Um, and you know, we actually see we're getting a lot more sales calls per week than before because we could do virtual and people are less inclined to say, well, wait till Black Hat and then we'll meet uh, yeah. because I want to talk in person. Now it's like, well, there might not be a, a Black Hat worth going to for another year or two. Uh, let's just talk now on Zoom. Have you seen any of the threats that you guys are rooting out? Like you guys are gathering intelligence. You're, you really uh, collect a lot of cool stuff. I've, I've, I've looked at it. It's pretty interesting. Have you seen sort of shifts like in the last, um, say, six to eight months with fundamental differences in the way we're all working? Does that change the way hacking intelligence works? Do you see different things? Yeah, we've seen definite uptick in threats, particularly to things like VPNs and web-based platforms. Uh, I think a lot of that is stemming from more widespread use as uh, many corporations move to a, a work from home or hybrid kind of way of doing business. And you know what has happened is there's been simply a massive rollout of new IT projects due to COVID-19 and people needing that infrastructure for work from home. And that, you know honestly, much of it's been rushed. And the hackers take note of this and, and they're leveraging it in their attacks because, you know, this is the new piece of the attack surface. And so that's where they want to shift their focus to. Interesting. You know, Paolo, uh, the last question here. There's a lot of people watching who are in startups or pondering. What, what advice do you have? I mean, I, I've watched you build your company and you know, I've been, uh, long been an admirer of the way you've gone about things. Well, for, for sort of budding entrepreneurs, what, what advice do you have? What's What's helped you um, succeed with your company that you might be able to share? 
I would say, uh, I would say two things is I would say, make sure you have uh, a co-founder that, that you can really trust and is going to work harder, harder than, than you can. And I've been extremely lucky in that. Uh, I have, I have the best co-founder I could ask for. Um, and then I'd say the second thing is build out your network of people who understand the industry to a high degree. Um, and, you know, that's why, you know, we're working with you. We have, yeah. uh, you know, recently we brought in, uh, Bill Crowell, ex, uh, uh deputy Amazing director guy. of the NSA. To work. Yeah. yeah. Great. So, um, you know, so we've really, you know, we've really taken a focus to, to get that advice and fill in the gaps where, you know, we're less knowledgeable on. Well, I want to say on behalf of the folks watching and myself and our whole team, I, I, we appreciate everything you do for the industry. Keep up the great work, um, keep growing the company, and we really do appreciate your advice um, and perspective on both your company and the industry. It was a really nice catching up, Colin. Thank you, Ed. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.